Group and I will be explaining and demonstrating Gauss's Law. Gauss's Law is a closed surface three-dimensional space in which uh, you find the flux of a vector field is calculated. Also, in relations, it distributes the electric charge to the electric field. An example, right here, they line up parallel to each other, so on. And so, when we are looking at the cylinder, we're really looking at the electric field going outwards from the middle, and really we're looking for the electric flux, which measures the flow of the electric field through a certain area. So your area is going up through the middle, and your electric field is perpendicular to that, and that creates a 90 degree angle. Now, the equation for electric flux is the dot product of the electric field times the area, and that's going to equal your electric field times the area times sine theta. Now, when your theta is 90 degrees, your sine is going to be one, which means it's just going to be area time, or electric field times area. So you come up here, and your flux value can also be written as your charge density over your epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is going to be a value that's given to you, so you don't have to worry about that. When you integrate the left side, you get the area times the derivative of your, no, the electric field times the derivative of the area equals your charge density enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Now, to get your Q value, your Q up here, what you gotta do is you have to take the derivative of the density times your, the integral of your density times your derived volume. The volume for a cylinder is pi r squared L, and when you derive that, you get two pi r L dr. Now, you plug that back up here for your dv, and you pull out everything that's a constant, and in this case, it'll be anything that's not an r. So, out comes your two pi l rho, or your density. Inside the integral is r dr. Integrate that, and that leaves you with r squared over two. Cancel out these twos right here, so your q value is going to be pi r squared l times rho. Now, when you come back up here to this equation, this q should go where this q is, and for your integral, the e, pull that out, so then you just integrate the dA, so A, and are integrating, or you're integrating the area, so your integration bounds are gonna be from zero to the area. The area of a cylinder is two pi r l, you plug that in, obviously the zero value is just gonna give you zero, so that's why it's not even down here. Then inside, this e is going to multiply by your two pi r l, equals pi r squared l rho over epsilon naught. So you cancel out the pi's, cancel out this r, this r squared becomes r, cancel out the l's. That leaves you with e equals your r times your rho, all divided by two epsilon naught. And uh, for the case where you're trying to find the charge and it's uniform, you can use ratios. And the ratio works when the charge is uniform only. Now, if the charge is non-uniform, you can use integration. And integration works for both uniform and non-uniform charges. On. Hello, my name is Clarence Reed and I'll be explaining when our charge is uniform, we can use ratios. And I'll be explaining ratios. During ratios, we will use our Q enclosed over our Q total and set it equal to our rho volume enclosed over our rho times volume, or our total volume. And that'll equal to this, and we can simplify it by canceling out our pi's and canceling out our l's, being left simply with our enclosed radius squared over our total radius, or yeah, over our total radius squared, and that'll still be equal to our enclosed charge over our total charge. We can then simplify that to get this relation right here. Our Q enclosed will equal our total charge multiplied by our given or our desired radius over our total radius. And when we're looking for our electric field of the radius when it's smaller than our total radius, we'll use the flux equation, set it equal to our enclosed charge over epsilon naught. We'll integrate the dA and get to this relation right here. And with this, we'll plug in our Q R squared over our total R squared. And we'll be able to 
to take this to the other side and get this relation right here. And this will be our electric field when our desired radius is smaller than our total radius. However, if we're looking for anything bigger than our total radius, we'll do the exact same steps until we get here when we plug in our uh, hue and close. Instead of our radius, our desired radius being a little r, it'll be our big r because that's all the charge that the cylinder can hold. So we'll have this relation of our total r squared over total r squared and they will cancel each other out. And we'll be left to take this to the other side and our electric field will equal our total charge over 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the length of the cylinder then multiply that by 1 over r. Good. All right, hi, my name is Chris Gallens, and I'm going to explain what you do when you have a non-uniform uh, charge for your electric field when it comes to a cylinder. So, still using some of the same principles like the area and the volume of the cylinder, but when you have your little r less than big r, your Q and close is gonna be equal to C, which is just some constant value times r to the value of n, and n could be anything, one half, two, three, whatever you want. And then your dv here, which is going to be two pi r l times dr. Come out here, you pull out all your constants, which once again is anything that's not an r value. So on the outside you have two pi times c l, and that's all multiplied times the interval of r times r to the n dr. Now using your rule of multiplying exponents, you can get this line down here, which states that two pi c l times the integral of r times n to the 2 dr. Now when you integrate this, you're going to come up with this answer right here. So when you have your little r less than big r, you're going to get 2 pi cl r to the power of n plus 2 all divided by n plus 2. And we're going to work an example later where we have a value and that will be n and we'll figure out numerically what this will be. Now when you have your r is bigger than little r is bigger than big r, your q and close is equal to your q total. So it's along the same lines as our inside, except we use big r here instead of little r. And when you go through that same process, you get the same answer, except where little r is up here, you have big r. So two pi c l times big r to the power of n plus two, all divided by n plus two. And that's due to the fact that our area is or our little r is enclosing the whole big r and isn't just a part of it. Hi, this is Jonathan Warrior, and I'm going to be showing you how to find the electric field inside and outside a cylinder with a non-uniform density. So we're going to start with the charge here, which is going to be denoted as Q enclosed is equal to the integral of rho times dv. And with that, we're going to move on to the integral times rho naught times r times 2 pi, 2 pi r times l times dr is equal to 2 pi rho naught l times the integral of r squared times dr. And with that integration, you're going to end up with 2 pi rho naught times l times r, r cubed over r3, or r cubed over 3. And with that, we're going to end up with two equations here. One equation is going to have 2 pi L uh, rho naught times R cubed over 3. And with Q total, we're going to replace R with A3, which is going to represent, the A is going to represent the entire cylinder, and R is going to represent what's outside the cylinder. So moving on to what's inside the cylinder, we're going to have the um, enclosed integral of the electric field times the derivative of the area which is going to be denoted here inside the cylinder as <clears throat> Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So with that, we're going to include the area of a cylinder here, which is going to be E times 2 pi R L, 2 pi R L rho naught times R cubed over 3 epsilon naught. And with all of this here, we're going to combine these two equations and basically we're going to do algebra here. We'll take r squared out of this here, which is originally r cubed, and we're going to cancel everything else here, 
and then we're going to end up with E times R is less than A, which is rho naught times R, R squared, 3 over epsilon naught. And for outside the cylinder, we're going to do the Q total instead of the Q enclosed from the last equation, which is over E uh, epsilon naught. And here we're going to have these two equations again, which is going to be 2 pi RL is equal to 2 pi L rho naught A cubed over 3 epsilon naught. Now combining these equations will give us 2 pi L rho naught A uh, cubed over 2 pi RL 3 epsilon naught. With all of these canceling out here, and with R being at the bottom, we're going to end up with rho naught A cubed over 3 epsilon naught times 1 over R.